4,795 pounds, 26 foot, no slide, basic series, kind of starter class bunkhouse trailer coming in on trade here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Folks decide to update and upgrade after working with us years and years ago. The RV's not in perfect shape, but it's certainly campable. And I'm going to try to give you more clarification of that as we go through so that you have a better idea what you're walking into when you come visit us here at Haywood RV. So the general physical shape of the RV is, is pretty good. It needs a cleaning. It, it needs a good cleaning. Um, I believe the folks may have had a cat. And I say that based off the fact that there's a lot of little fur flying around in here. It doesn't really show up on camera. And I hope you appreciate the fact I'm willing to share something like that, even when you can't see it. Now, ideally, many of, if not all of, the things that I'll point out that are not positive about the camper, ideally, we would prefer to go through and have corrected before you ever come to see the camper. However, given the way that inventory is in such shortage and high demand right now, I am trying to put out campers as soon as I can, wherever I can. Because there's a lot of folks that will say, hey, if you haven't cleaned it yet, I don't mind spending a day or two to clean it as long as the price is right. Well, that's, you know, I'm leaving the choice up to you folks. If you call very quickly after this video goes live, then you're going to see the camper pretty much exactly like it looks like today. If, for some magical happenstance, the RV is still here for a few weeks, we'll probably have had a chance to go through it. So, hope you appreciate the housekeeping note. Uh, let's, hey, let's start opening up some storage. We're going to start up here. Previous owners on a flip-open overhead door added these nice little kind of locking strut arms so that, you know, you don't got to juggle that open with your head. And anytime I see a nice kind of space for a wastebasket down here, I'm happy. They also added um, a couple pretty nice, like, kind of homegrown storage solutions. Like on the right-hand side under that shelf right there, you see that uh, extra vertical cabinet. They added that. You'll see a similar thing where they added some cabinetry in the bathroom where it was really needed. Now, the RV needs cleaning, but it'll be easy to clean, thankfully, because it does have a carpetless, uh, ventless floor. But, I mean, really, it... It needs uh, something that is very good at um, kind of going through and, and ripping animal hair out of fabrics and stuff. Uh, like, you know, a good Dyson vacuum kind of cleaning sort of thing. Bluetooth. Uh, nope, I'm sorry. Not Bluetooth. DVD stereo. I forgot this one's old enough. It does not have the Bluetooth function. I see where the previous owners added the TV. They did a nice job mounting it. What is nice is they also left that mount behind so that when it comes time for you to add one, you know right where to put it. This is a classic Jack and Jill bunk, and it looks like they kind of took just the regular shop razor, uh, shaved down some foam padding to put under there to, you know, give whoever was sleeping back here a little more comfortable evening experience. And when these went to a double over double bunk, you actually lost this handy little bonus drawer down here. I always called it the socks and undies drawer. I miss that in the Cherokee RVs. That's a cool extra little nudge of space. But the Jack and Chill bunk does give us a little closet space up here for the kiddos, so at least one of their, like, duffel bags you could stuff in there. Now, this is a split bathroom. This is basically what became the 26DJSE, I believe. Is it the DJSE? So, Cherokee makes two versions of this floor plan, the DJSE and the BHSE, and they're almost identical, except for one has a, a bathroom with the sink just outside the door, and one has a bathroom with the sink inside the bathroom closet itself. I don't necessarily like or dislike either more than the other one. They just happen to build two versions of it. So there you have it. The bathroom here is very simple. But I mean, it's a job done, right? What more do you need to do? And the addition of that little, you know, even, even if it's inexpensive, even if it's not fancy, this extra cabinet space that we have right here, that is very, very handy in a little bunkhouse like this. You can see they uh, opted for an open design on this one from Cherokee, and that's something they still do today, and it makes the whole RV kind of look and feel larger. Wildwood does the same thing. Jayco uh, does like a half privacy wall, whereas Catalina can be optioned to a full privacy wall, and that's one of the nice things about working with us here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We have so many different brands that we handle that we've always got a little bit of something for everybody. Now, um, if you are a little bit curious, uh, we can take a look. That sofa can fold down, and the uh, dinette over here can also fold down into some bonus sleeping spaces in the event that the bunks in the main bed are not enough. And I am a big fan of having that huge window overlooking our campsite instead of only staring at the neighbors. Now, if you want to, uh, the newest Cherokee, as I call it their Invisiview entry door, if you're watching our new videos, they have a, a window in the door. This one does not. 
but that also means it has one less heat loss point so your air conditioning runs a little more effectively and they did add that extra handle right there now if you want the light and the airflow all you do is open the main door and let the screen door do its job no sweat uh, up front here, once again, they added some of those kind of, here's what I meant when I said, you know, the struts, the little simple hinge kind of jobs to keep that cabinet door flipped up. Stuff like that is inexpensive and very, very effective. And just like the bunks you see, they added the uh, the foam topper here. That looks like a nice thick dual layer one. And this is pretty much the default answer to bedding in the RV industry. If you're not going to replace the bed, chances are you are at least going to do something like this little peek at the storage as we step outside here. Now I'm noticing the mount on the rear awning arm is not in ideal format. I'm noticing that the awning fabric itself has, looks like a scuff or a snag maybe from say like a tree branch that was hanging down, something like that. Um, it, it's not ideal. The RV is still campable. And again, in a perfect world, I, I've been advised we would like to get some of that addressed. Now, whether we have had or have not yet had the opportunity to address those things really depends on how quickly after this video goes live, somebody's on the phone with us. Because naturally, jobs like that take time. And we've got a service department that has things scheduled down to five-minute blocks. I mean, we are always hopping back there. Uh, the uh, RV overall on the outside, again, kind of like the inside, It, I mean, at worst, it needs a bath. There's just... There's not much I really need to say about it out here, though if you look up top, you can see that they did include one of those like vent covers over the bathroom uh, vent fan to help keep some of that uh, air or, or rain out, even when you're you know running the fan on a rainy day. The tires are original. Um, no, 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 they're not. I'm sorry, I, I got my campers mixed up. I've seen a lot of RVs today. The tires are Goodyear replacements, so they have updated the tires, which is nice. Um, I believe, uh, with about 99% uh, certainty, with nobody telling me, they had a bike rack on the back of this thing. Um, this was made before the little gray wolves had those flip down cargo racks on the back like we almost take for granted today. But there's some pretty telltale signs. Like over here, a couple little scuffs on the bumper, a little bracket mark, and on the rear wall, a couple little bump spots where the bikes going down the road, the handlebars or the tires kind of rub against the rear wall. It's not hurting anything, just a little cosmetic scuff but once again you guys deserve to know it's there so over here once again we've got all those awesome campsite windows that i know a lot of folks are looking for another thing cherokee does on this one that i like a lot of brands will give you a camp kitchen under here like our wildwoods do that cherokee just does storage because not everybody cares about a camp kitchen some people just like dude i just need all the room in the world to put stuff my kids my kids bring a lot of stuff along well there you go now if you are so inclined you got some outside speakers for your stereo. And this is where I was saying the awning had a little scuff on it. And once again, I sure hope you folks appreciate the fact that we're willing to like walk right up to it and point that stuff out for you because that's the kind of stuff that not everybody's willing to do for you in the RV industry. And, uh, you know, I just try to go above and beyond. I wanna make sure that you folks know exactly what you're getting into here because I know that, you know, in the early days of eBay when it was like the Wild West, and you could just get away with murder on there. I ordered a Nintendo GameCube. And what showed up was a GameCube box with not a GameCube in it. And I don't ever want someone to have that kind of feeling and experience when they come to my family's dealership here at Halo RV. Hope you can appreciate that. So take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Let's get you camping, everyone.